What's up guys? So today we have a budget build. It's going to be in this case here, the Nova Mesh ARGB. It's an MATX case and the person who is buying it, the client, wanted to target PS like uh, PS5 like performance. So I went with a 5700 XT, 8700K and a few other parts mixed in and we're targeting like a $450 price range. Um, not all of these deals can be like redone. Like you're not always going to find a 5700 XT for cheap, but for the most part, you can get one for around under $200 now. Let's start by opening this box. Sorry about the audio. It's going to be a little bit hard to hear from a distance. Alright. As you can see, this is the all white everything. It even has a white border. That was what was attractive about it. It's MATX, it's small, so it's gonna fit nice. It's got two fans on the front and one fan in the back. I think it's a pretty sexy looking case. So 65 for that. And uh yeah, let's jump to the parts now. All right, so we've got a pretty simple, smart 500 watt power supply. <clears throat> this is the uh, Asus Prime B360MA motherboard, which is plenty for this chip because we're not going to overclock it. Um, this is a really cheap little cooler. It's not my favorite, but it's within the budget that the person needs. This is the ASRock 5700 XT Challenger. It's not like a super crazy card. Very basic dual fan. Uh, we got 16 gigs of HyperX. We have the 8700K. And we got a one terabyte hard drive. I hate them for my own personal stuff, but they're still good for a lot of people. And a pretty, a pretty budget friendly uh, 256 gig SSD. Guys, I totally forgot to. We also have tweezers. You see these tweezers right here? Someone might get that joke. Actually, no, I forgot these here. Um, just a couple sleeved extensions. I don't have, <laughs> this is going to suck, and it's going to look like crap too. I don't have another red one. I looked everywhere in this room, and I have tons of them. I'm not a huge fan of red, but it was a request from the, the buyer. So that's what we're going to deal with um, for now. If I find another one, maybe I'll throw it in there. But yeah, that's what we got. And our pretty case. Let's start the build. All right, so the first thing everyone should always do is just disassemble the PC case. I'm not gonna, this isn't like a build video. I'm gonna do kind of like a time-lapse thing, but first thing, always gonna disassemble the PC case. Check it out. Of course, they crank these on. Once you get to that point, you know, the tempered glass is good and you've checked pretty much everything about the case over, you know, no dents, damage, whatever. Then you can pretty much start. This is really heavy. The thing I always suggest is to put the glass and extra parts into the box. Before I go into time lapse mode, I just wanted to show you one other cool thing. This has a uh, RGB controller with the case. So for 65 bucks, you get a sweet case, all white, two RGB fans in the front, one in the back, the controller. And in this case, this motherboard doesn't have another uh, three pin RGB header, but this does. So I can actually use that and plug this into this controller, which is awesome. And I believe you can wire the reset switch here, sorry, uh, to set these, the uh, different color RGB. So we're gonna do that.
All right, now we get to the annoying part where we gotta put these in. So I gotta take this thing out. And then I just realized this has SATA power too, so we gotta think about how many SATA cables are going. This is a kind of small power supply. It will do the job, but you gotta always plan ahead, guys. So what's nice is that this just had one screw here, right there, and then you can just pop it out. Just wanna mount the SSD first, just cause the screws are there, and then the hard drive goes inside. It should look a little something like this. Let's put it back in. I just noticed I actually forgot a screw, so it's always good to go back and check your work. It's really hard to do this at the same time. I also think that this PC definitely needs some fans in the top. These are obviously not included, but I'm gonna throw them in because the 5700 XT can actually get pretty hot. So two 140s in the top, keep the RPM down low and you'll have some good airflow. I ended up just going with one fan the uh, problem with this case is up here. So I actually thought it was designed for a 140, but you can only fit 120s. So, because I don't want to damage the case anymore, and as you can see, it probably won't fit, I uh, just went with this single. So pretty much all I got left to do is pop in the GPU, tidy up some of the cables, and then do the cable management on the back. Now let's manage these cables. All right, I think that looks pretty good. One thing to note too is you can also install SSDs here and here. It'd be a little complicated with this thing in the way. Um, that's why I did it down here. If I had a fancy SSD, I would probably put it up here or if I was making like a cover or something like that. One other suggestion I would have with this case is to make some kind of a nice little display here. Or in this case, I probably, before I give it to the new, for the uh, customer, I'm going to cover this in a skin. All right, just pop the GPU in. Now it's time for some B-roll. told me last year I would be building this $400 PC with this much performance, I would have literally laughed at you. The prices were so bad. Something like this would have been almost a thousand or maybe even $1,200 not even a year ago. Not even seven months ago. So yeah, I think it looks pretty dope. I wired the reset switch for lights. Got a bunch of different settings. It's too bad this board doesn't have it, but sometimes the switch is just way better because you don't have to install any RGB software. This board, this card, nothing has RGB on it so it's nice and simple. But yeah, tell me what you guys think about it. Hello. Alright, now that we're back, I normally do this myself but because I have to get this PC to the guy pretty quick and I don't have the time to stretch this video out, I'm just going to show you this really great website. So the website's called gpucheck.com you can essentially go in here and select your setting. So like, let's go for a medium setting with the 5700 XT. This is gonna be pretty much equivalent to like a PlayStation 5, maybe a little bit faster. And if you scroll all the way down, you can see here with your processor of choice, what uh, performance you're gonna get. So you get stuff like 129. Um, oh yeah, the dark green, by the way, is the 1% low. So that's just the lowest it's going besides the 0.01%. Um, so yeah, we have 257 uh, on Overwatch. Let's look at something like Cyberpunk. 135 at medium settings. That's pretty good. And this is like Modern Warfare right here. 289 at 1080p. If you keep scrolling down, you can get to uh, higher resolutions. I would say that this system could do 1440p, no problem. Uh, you could even bump it up to high. And let's go down to 4K. And even at 4K, we're seeing some serious numbers at the medium setting. Um, obviously, the higher you go, like if you go to, let's go back to ultra quality. If you go all the way down. We go to 1440p, you know, it's going to start, you're going to start seeing lower FPS, like Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War, average is only 74 FPS. 
And if we go down to 4K, it's going to be even worse. But even then, most people shouldn't use the ultra setting. Everyone should be on high settings if you have a card capable of doing it. Let's get to the parts though, because this is kind of where it gets a little bit weird. And my suggestion to what I just showed you varies depending on how much money you can spend. So if you have something like the 8700K and you find it locally cheap, it's a really good you know, processor. Six cores, 12 threads. It's on a dead platform, but it's still DDR4 and it's modern. Um, not that modern, I guess, because we're on DDR5. But let's look at some of the uh, the stuff we have here. You know, you got 164. Um, the T, you got to be careful with Intel because Intel has all these little different uh, symbols that mean stuff. Like you can get a, a T or an S or an F or a K. So there's all these different variants. So the average price I'm going to put at around probably $140. You can go to sold listings and check for yourself. Um, but I recommend this. The Ryzen 5 5600. Everyone knows the CPU. It's very well balanced. It's also on a dead platform, but it's still more recent than the 8700K. Sort of, because they've had different uh, variations of AM4. So this and like a cheaper um, B450 or, or B550 motherboard is a great idea to, to pair instead of what I just showed. <clears throat> As for the GPU, there is a pretty similar performance uh, between the 6600 XT, which is more modern, and the 5700 XT. I would say all day, if you can get a 6600 XT, go for that just because it's newer. Um, this is a 5700, this one here. Here's a 6600 XT. You can see like they're anywhere between 200, 189. I've seen them sell for like $150 on eBay and less. So if you can figure out which one between those you want, you're going to kind of get the same performance across the board. But um, anyways, guys, thanks for tagging along with this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.